singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. What a glorious feeling, I'm happy again. Ah, nothing better. That's the legendary entertainer Gene Kelly in his most famous scene from the 1952 movie, Singing in the Rain. Kelly's widow, Patricia Ward Kelly, knew him best, and now she's doing a special performance tomorrow night honoring the Hollywood legend. Uh, she's calling it Gene Kelly, The Legacy, and it, this is really absolutely wonderful because it's rare clips. It, it's your memories and your experiences with him, um, and really a rare treat for people. It's very exciting stuff, and I got to tell you, I'll be honest, uh, Singing in the Rain, one of my favorite movies of all time, and, and, and most people's top ten of all time. Um, when you watch that, when you see that, what do you see that I don't see? having known him and been... Really I see Gene behind the camera shooting that number. Yeah. Everybody sees him in front of the camera, but he wanted to be known more for being behind the camera and for choreographing and, and directing that sequence. And, and also the fact that he's very, very ill when he shot that. So he actually did have really? a temperature for about 104 when he oh, shot it. Goodness. So, But it's just it's the joy of it, it's, and it's a universal language of dance. It relates to everybody around the world. Well, and, and an era of performers, and, and now that you mentioned that he was not feeling well at the, at the time, an era of performers who were just consummate performers and you, they just were always there at that level. Yeah. They just don't make them like that, right? Well, I, I think they're fewer and, and further between because they, he was just a consummate pro. You're absolutely right. In every stretch of the imagination, I mean, he was really, people describe him as a perfectionist and he hated that because he said, since when was that a derogatory word when you hit your marks and you do everything with precision? He was just, he was very dedicated and precise and I think that may be why we're watching these 60 and 70 years later. So uh, he, did he, he, he fell in love with being behind the camera, working behind the camera when he was in in uh, the service, is that right? Well, he actually, when he came, he learned some there, but he, what he learned is when he got to Hollywood, he realized no one really knew how to use the camera to capture dance. No one had really studied yeah. that. And he began to see what, what they would do is that they would shoot him dancing, and then they would cut away to someone watching him, and he said, but then you've lost the dance. So he decided in order to control what he was doing, he needed to be behind the camera using that and, and to control how that, ca that camera sees the dance and to make it as imaginative as possible. So the sh show that you're doing, um, you're kind of using all the senses, right? You're, you're bringing in some, some, some audio and visual to, to really make it come alive, yeah? Well, it's really a personal story. I had the great privilege of recording Gene in some format every day for almost 10 years. He brought me out here to write his memoir and then married me five years into the process. <laughs> So it's this, it's this very personal, it's Gene on Gene essentially, it's Gene Kelly Unplugged. It's a story most people don't have. And I weave these stories between these extraordinary film clips and then he used to sing to me at night, which was amazing. That was often how he'd reveal some of the most intimate parts of his life. And so I have these very rare recordings. And, and then it goes into the end of his life and the aftermath. And one of the things, what's so nice about this upcoming show is that we did sell out for tomorrow night at the post office in Beverly Hills, the old post office at the Wallace Annenberg. But they've rescheduled a Valentine's Day show. And that to me is so perfect because Gene to me was the epitome of romance. And he was, uh, one of the things that's in the show is he used to drape Valentine's all around the house starting about midnight. He was like a little kid. And I had some of those, which are really, they're really cute. And he would run down to the Beverly Hills stationery store and he oh, would- look at that. He would buy these and- Hey, this up. this one says, I'm glad you're my wife, guess who? He wrote in on it. And then here's one that so says, uh, roses are red, white, pink, and yellow. You're my Valentine and I'm your fella. And it's just, it, he was just, as I say, he was just so tender and, and yet very tough on screen and in his determination. But it was this wonderful mix. And well, what's, what's funny is I, he does come across on the screen as, as, as a tender guy. And I, one of the questions I wanted to ask you was, is that who he was off camera? Do we, was there a lot of similarity between what we saw and what you saw? Well, there is a, but definitely what you see on screen is a, is a character he's playing. Yeah. But the, the thing is, there's so many, 
there's so much to him that you don't know. There's so many dimensions. I mean, this was a genius, a man who spoke French and read Latin, spoke Yiddish, read a book a day. He was an economics major. And, but I think the, the basic tenderness is something that, that was always there. And the, that twinkle in his eye was real. And the, and the gentleness, a gentleman. He was a true gentleman. And, and I think really a real Renaissance man. You don't, you don't find those very often. Amazing. And I'm so glad that you added another show because I would hate for people not to get a chance to see it. Well, they for can. More, yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> for more information about Gene Kelly and this uh, tribute performance, just go to our website, kcal9.com, and then click on Scene on TV. It looks like it's